Good morning, everybody. Welcome to San Andrews, and uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, my name is Xuan Dong Ren, and uh, even for me, it's a difficult name to say, so you can just call me Dong. So my father don't normally say right. And uh, as a CEO, I am uh, very delighted here today to introduce you our new manager, Steve Kostro. And uh, as a club, we are very excited and uh, confident. <coughs> Our manager will lead us to success and back to Premier League again. And uh, here, Steve, thought you're going to take your question. Thank you. Steve, uh, yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Um, a new opportunity here. You, you left looking for a first team manager's role. Did you ever expect to be back no. here so quickly? And no, I didn't. And what kind of job have you got ahead of you? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, you know, when I left here, it was, it was pretty sad really when I left I didn't want to leave um, had a great time at the club so to be back here so quick is a um, it is a shock to be honest I have to say that uh, what sort of job have I got ahead of me uh, a great job great challenge but a great job ahead of me for sure you witnessed a 6-1 defeat at the weekend what are the main issues with the team at the moment why are they struggling well I mean it was probably a good game to see at the weekend in respect of, it was the third game in a week. I think that there were some mitigating circumstances for perhaps the performance in terms of Hull had an extra 24 hours over us going into the third game in the championship in a week. So by the time you get to the third game in a week, you know, probably a few of those lads are 33K, 35K on an average. So there's going to be some dip in their performance. I think that uh, if you have a look at yesterday's re result, so we play on Wednesday against Sheffield Wednesday, for instance, they get another 24 hours. They're at home yesterday, and they go and get a 3-0 result. So sometimes the setting up the fixtures goes for, for you and against you. I, I think for the players, it went against them a little bit last week. Then, obviously, um, Lee decided to stay with the same starting lineup which was even more understandable because they hadn't won for a while. So he felt, don't change the team now, because if you change the team now, even if you go and freshen it up with three or four faces and the team get beat, he's gonna, people are going to say to him, why did you change the team? So he was in a no-win situation, really, picking the team for the weekend. Um, I know the characters of the lads, uh, so I, I think that, you know, probably somewhere along the line, whilst the result isn't acceptable, and they will say that as well, by the way, the players will say that, because they're an honest set of, of, of lads. Um, I think there were some circumstances that went against them at the weekend, but um, I don't think I can defend them too much more than that, but, but predominantly that's what I will do from time to time anyway. I don't tend to speak about what goes on in the dressing room, what goes on in there stays in there. What are the expectations for this season and beyond? What can this team achieve? Well, first and foremost, I mean, there's always a, a long-term plan and everybody wants to have a long-term plan in a football club. But for me, you'll never get to the long-term without having the short-term. So the short-term plan at the moment is to try and get an 11 ready to play against Cardiff City in, in just under a couple of weeks' time and then to get ourselves out of that relegation zone. That's our immediate task. Can you look beyond that? Have you, have you been told by the owners that they're looking for a promotion chase this season? No, I haven't been told anything like that, no. We haven't, um, we've spent enough time to now, now together, um, two meetings before I was given the job, um, a, late, a late night travelling Friday up here. Um, the team had finished training, had arrived in Hull by then, all the tactics had been done by Lee, so I've spent time then another four and a half hours um, in a car with, with Dong and, um, on, uh, on Saturday. So no, nothing has been told to me what I need to do or my expectations or whatever. I think just, I think pretty much anyway, they'll know my type of character. Don't forget I had, you know, nigh on a month at the end of last season. So hopefully I can stand them in good stead. Steve, the right man for the job. Well, first and foremost, a proven record. This is uh, the club needs at the moment. And also, 
it's time for us to having some stability now. And uh, I know that we always been labelled foreign owners, and we don't know where we get the saying that we like keep second managers, which unfortunately happened. But the longer Steve Koch will stay here, the more likely we'll get back to the Premier League sooner. So that's the reason we choose him. Can you give the background to Harry Redknapp's sacking? Was it purely the results on the pitch? Well, for sure, it's, uh, that didn't happen because he doesn't speak Chinese. Like uh, the other day he was saying, and I speak Chinese, and I wouldn't say it's purely about the results. And uh, there are certain things I think we both agreed we need to move on to different directions. And uh, as a person, I love him. I cannot ever thank him enough, along with Steve last year. They saved us there. And uh, that's going to be a different story without these two there. Dong, do you have a message for the fans? Because there's been a lot of upheaval the last 12 months. Well, this uh, football in this country is huge. And it also means a lot of things to us. And uh, we have a lot of business, like casinos. This is not a casino business. You go to a casino, you, you back, go back home with a bag of cash or with empty hands. We know football is something different. We feel for the fans, like the result we had two days ago, and we really feel for it. And we apologize for that result, which is absolutely not acceptable. We went to the dressing room, we said exactly the same thing for the players, and Steve said something really nice in the dressing room. Tonight, when you brush your teeth, Take a long look at your mirror yourself. Think about it. The fans deserve what you, your performance up there was totally a disaster. And we feel that. And considering taking over this football club, it's going to be one year in 20 days. And this is the first time we actually ready to offering stability to the club. I'm sure the fans would be warming to the, the sound of stability. I mean, Steve, have you got a job to do to heal the squad? Because we've got some players who are brought in by Gary Rout, some players brought in by Zola, a lot of players brought in by Harry Redknapp. Do you have factions? Do you need to heal it? What do you need to do to bring all those players together? I don't, I don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't been in there to sense it. Um, and if perhaps you may think that, which is why you've asked that question, or it may be being talked about in and around. Um, but that won't be any different to me because I've walked in many dressing rooms and normally only get a job anyway when they're bottom of the championship anyway. So, you know, when I've, when I've walked into clubs, there's been... I mean, I've had some, some, some really good clubs at difficult times, you know. You've only got to look at the Portsmouth times. You've only got to look at the times when I went to Nottingham Forest. You know, it wasn't... You know, I've had administrations, two or three different sets of owners. Um, Nigel Dougherty, God bless him, when I went into Nottingham Forest, probably one of the best chairmen along with Steve Lansdowne in the Championship over the last 10 years. Um, so I haven't walked into any easy situations anyway, but um, I suppose I'm pretty battle-hardened to that now. And uh, this dressing room will be a good dressing room. Give me a little bit of time, this dressing room will 100% be a good dressing room. 100%. I think there's really good boys in there. I'm not sure there are any fractions. I'm really, really not sure about that. A lot of the lads I know from last year, and to be fair, a lot of the new boys you just said that Harry had brought in, I know pretty much all of them anyway. I know I don't know all of their characters, but you know when you play against these boys over the last, I don't know, five or ten years or whatever, you, you know them anyway. So I don't think I'm going to walk into any big surprises with any of them. Have you spoken to Harry Redknapp about some of the players? Because I mean, was it 13, 14 during the summer? No. He's, he's brought a lot of them in. Along no. With the area. Have you talked to him about <coughs> No, I haven't. Uh, because... Players? No, I haven't. No, I, I haven't done that because I don't. I think pretty much I I know them anyway. I think I would know them as well as Harry would know them. So I don't. No, I don't. I don't think I need to do that. Uh, and I think anyway, you know, it's like me asking you about one of one of your colleagues. You might have a different opinion on him than I might have. So I think we're better off. I, I like to make my own opinions on on people. That's that's my gut feeling anyway. 
Steve, uh, Matt Seal, ITV News. Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you, how are you? Yeah, good, great, um, thanks. A couple of questions. First one, driving <coughs> into Birmingham this morning, I saw your name on a massive billboard saying, welcome to Birmingham. Did you? Like Whereabouts is that? that? It's just by Star City. Very glamorous. You'll like it when you see it, when you drive past it. Just wanted to get your reaction to the buzz about you coming here, what you feel about it, and just what being manager of this club means to you. Well, I suppose I don't know the buzz about that because I don't, I don't do social media or anything like that, so I don't know there is a buzz, and thank you very much for telling me that. Um, that's really kind, just really kind of everybody. You know, I, I want to do a good job for the supporters here. I thought they were great. I, you, you know, when you come into a club, and uh, when I came into this club last year, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. But you know, after being here the three weeks, I felt as though I'd been here ages. The people are so warm, everybody. The people on the terraces, the players were great, they were receptive. Um, in the classroom, in the changing room. I say the classroom, a room like this where we used to do our video work. Classroom, call it what you like, I suppose. Um, the people around the place, you know, down at the training ground, you know, so you've, you've got the kit man, you've got the physios, you've got the fitness coaches, you've got the groundsmen. I remember speaking to the groundsmen um, down at the training ground before we were just to go off to Bristol. And, you know, he was so uptight about it and wanted us to do well. And it was fantastic to see that that you've really got, it's a special club here, you know, but you've got to be in, inside it to know how special it is. And the office staff here, you know, coming in and seeing them all again this morning and, you know, some good solid handshakes with a few of the guys and, and some lovely cuddles with the girls, but, um, or cuddles with the guys and handshakes with the girls, whatever you want to put it, but it was great. It was great to see them all again. I'm really looking forward to it. Really, really looking forward to it. And if Dan asked, I'll ask you the same question about a message for the fans. You could maybe forgive them for being a little bit impatient. Things haven't been as stable as they might have been over the last what, 10 months, I guess. What's your message to them today? Um, my message is I just want to get the, the football club into being a hard-working, healthy, competitive, cohesive and disciplined environment. That's probably what I want to get. Because if I can get that, we'll be successful. And what's the, what's the top two things you have to do first? When you come in with that as your mission, what do you look at first? What do you need to do? Um, probably my own leadership and how I'm going to be, because that will reflect and that was what their attitude will be then. Um, get everybody together. Two things. Way of playing, team spirit. It's three things I've given you. I've probably lumped a little bit on myself with that one, so sorry about the third one, but try and get, try and get together a team spirit and a way of playing. And I think if you look at any, any successful team, they were always would have had a way of playing in their team spirit. It might take a while to get to the way of playing because of the missing out on the pre-season, if you know what I mean, which is it's absolutely key. It's not an ideal time um, to get a job when you haven't got your pre-season to get things sorted out, but because then you can make mistakes. And it, and it doesn't matter when you're coaching the players and asking them to do different things. So first of all, what I've got to find out is how can they play and then build a spirit on the back of it. Very final quick question. What do you think you can offer that the last three managers perhaps couldn't have been? Stability. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I can offer. I don't, I don't know how... Um, obviously, I know how Harry worked um, because I worked with him at the back end of last season. And um, we're sorry for him and disappointing for him for sure. Um, Gianfranco, uh, I only saw I saw Birmingham City a couple of times while Gianfranco was in charge, and obviously Gary before that. So I, I think we're all different in our in our own philosophies and our ways of doing things. And uh, over a period of time, it will only be then that you know, not it's not what I say now. It's probably more about what I do. How similar is this to the situation last season? Because the club was struggling, they just lost home to Burt now, we're on Easter Monday, three games to go. Yeah. Have you got a very similar job? How different is this to that? No, I don't think it's like that. I mean, I think last year, I think last year, you know, coming in with Harry, Paul Groves, and coming into the existing, um, Kevin Hitchcock was part of the staff. I mean, that was an unbelievable situation to get out of. You know, I know a lot was made of. Huddersfield making their changes or whatever like that but we went to see Huddersfield on a Tuesday and they were no near, nowhere near as good as they were here on that Saturday when we won 2-0 you know it looked to like a lot of them did need a rest and if you were to look at it David Wagner was right to rest them in the end
he was right. He was proved right with that decision. Um, and then obviously to go away to Bristol City on the last game of the season, needing, needing a win, all of a sudden they'd turned their form round and they'd got picked up and had some good success towards the back end of the season. And then, a, a, you know, just a small game across the road at Aston Villa, you know, that probably we should have got something out of that one. Had we scored from the little corner that we'd done, the game might have been different maybe. But, um, you know, you take that one on the chin and look forward to your next game against them. So. I think that last season was uh, an incredible job done um, by Harry, um, by Paul Groves, uh, by the rest of the staff in there. You know, let's not underestimate the staff that were already here, how supportive they were. Everyone, everybody at the football club. You know, it was, it was an unbelievable um, task last season. So, you know, if we, can, if we can meet this season full on, hopefully we won't be in that situation again. Does that whet the appetite a little bit? Because the Huddersfield game... Yeah, it was a great performance. It was also a fantastic occasion for a football player. So that give you a little t- sense of what could be possible. I, I know what is what is possible at this football club. I mean, I was born forty minutes down the road here in Cheltenham, so you know I've known I've known about this football club for for many a year, and, and I'm a very proud man to be the manager of them today. Very very proud, and um, I will do my utmost for sure for for the club and for the supporters, for the owners. You know the owners. You know, I know all of a sudden it's been said and the word stability has come out and four managers in a certain period of time and all of that. You know, to be fair to them since they've been here, you know, they, they certainly have backed, backed their managers with, with a lot of finances. So I know at the moment, you know, we've spoke about this briefly that we'll actually stay in the car when we had these chats, myself and Dong. But, you know, if you look at the backing that they've given their managers so far, I mean, blimey, you know, I've never had anything like that in my life. Um, and hopefully I'm long enough now you'll here have to more see in the future. A lot Steve, more. Steve, have you been told will there be anybody available? I haven't even asked that. I think first of all, first and foremost, this dressing room needs to breathe a little bit and find out who's who's where and who's doing what. I think that you know the answer is not always bringing players in, bringing players in, bringing players in. The answer is coach them, and if they can't do what you can, what you want them to do, then is then maybe go to the chairman to Don and say, can we go and purchase this player? So first and foremost, let's let's get stuck in, get working with a fantastic group of lads. That's really what I want to do first. And try and find that 11 that starts against Cardiff. Steve, Phil from the Press Association, welcome back. Thanks, um, mate. Where does it rank in your career in terms of the task and the challenge that you've got on your hands and the, sort of the job itself and the size of the club? Well, it's funny because I, I don't know... Going ahead, I don't think it's been as big a task as it was keeping Nottingham Forest up when they were bottom of the table and helping to keep Birmingham City up last season because I thought they were unbelievable tasks. And, and when, when you get a really big club that's, that's struggling or down at the bottom end of the table, the pressure just increases on the players every week. So, you know, I've been in and I know what's going to happen at some stage here. There's going to be things that we're going to work on on the training ground this week when they haven't got the eyes of the world on them. And it's a lot easier to pass that ball from A to B in training than what it is when you actually go out into the arena. So until you've actually been in the, the arena, it's very, very difficult. Which is why I know they, these top players, they get paid excuse me, huge amounts of money to go out and perform because that's what they do. They entertain people. So... I'm, I'm not sure it was as big a job going forward as it was that job last season here. I, I would put that down as being one of the best things that's happened to me experience-wise in that month of last season. It was huge. It was huge for this football club to, to not get relegated. And um, I'm just looking forward now. And like I said, you know, that has been done. That, that job has been done. And, you know, thank you for... Whatever's going on out there at the moment, if there is a buzz about me being here, I'm very humbled by that, by everybody. But what I want to do is just look forward now and get cracking with the boys, really. You might be too modest to say, but do you think people have underestimated the contribution that you've personally made in the last three games of last season? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I wouldn't be into the, the social media side of it, so I don't know what the talk is and, you know... 
I'm very humbled by it all. You know, if they if people think that, then thank you very much. I'll try and do my best going forward from here.